Um, so thanks for that. I was picking up on a few things actually that Ken Skates highlighted, which is energy security, prosperity for the actual country that's manufacturing it, and expanding services and knowledge into those countries. So it's not just about an energy product, it's about a service that you're providing. Long term, the energy product may actually become secondary to the service you've given them. Nations around the world are dependent upon fossil fuels. Um, it's convenient, it's cheap, and it's easy. But as soon as that supply is cut, they're vulnerable. And they're vulnerable to political issues, they're vulnerable to cost issues, and they've got huge fluctuations. We've identified that actually they need a consistent supply, they need a reliable supply, and they need a cost-effective supply. And that's really where our company's sort of basis has started. It's developed a lot since then, but fundamentally we're looking to get a reliable, consistent supply to a customer that's in a vulnerable position, such as coastal nations, developing nations, island communities around the world, um, with a manufacturing base here in Wales. So a little bit about the company. We're WIFO funded. Um, 4.2 million has come through WIFO, and we've got a good close working relationship with them for the programme for West Wales and Valleys. That's been matched by uh, the company directors to give a £6 million pot. At the moment, we're actually 30% under, um, so we're doing good value for money in that. You can see, actually, we only started in summer 2016. Um, that's when the funding was approved. Now, as um, we just said, we've just put the device in the water and we're testing. And we are testing a full-scale prototype that's been delivered in the water from the funding arriving in our bank at the end of September. From this testing period, um, we've got a two-year project. We're looking to get three things, really. A validated power takeoff device. Um, the actual power takeoff device is going to be called the Power All. We're going to look at a component matrix so that when we deploy across the world, we can match our device to whatever wave climate there is, hypothetically, around the globe, with a minimum amount of interference on the actual barges themselves. And we need to work out what we're going to do in the next stage of testing, whether that is going down to Fabtest or Pembrokeshire or Cornwall, or actually if we're going to deploy, sell a device and go commercial straight away whilst taking data from that to improve. It's never going to be an end thing. It's always going to be continual improvement. And our test barge in Pembrokeshire will probably be there for the long haul. Uh, next. So what's happened so far? Well, our founder, Simon Gillette, thought about the idea four years ago. He's got a background as an engineer within the Navy, and then he's got a background in wind and solar power. Whilst that was ticking over, he realized that actually there's a growing market and a need for consistent energy, and that actually, as we said, the renewable resources off the coast of Wales are an untapped resource. Ironically, I was actually up at Carroll Castle, which is just down the road um, a few weeks ago, and they have a lagoon, which they release, and that was used to power a mill, uh, to power flour. That was in use 300 years ago. So this isn't actually a new energy industry for Wales. This is just something that's coming back into fashion at the minute because there's a demand for it. And we've undertaken modelling exercises with various companies. You can see there Atkins and Contessa, proving that the theory is fit for deployment. We haven't done any wave tank testing yet. Now, that's for two reasons, really. We want to get to see. We want to get an actual prototype in the water. We've partnered with Swansea University, and we're about to conduct flume tank testing starting next week. But the benefit of having our prototype, which is a full-scale prototype in the water, is as soon as we've found something in the workshop or found something in the flume tank, that data and that information can be relayed straight to us. We can make a component, and we can make changes very quickly. And rather than putting it into a lot of documentation and analysing it, we can make those changes very quickly, which results in lower costs for ourselves. On there. So looking through, uh, okay. Sorry, we're missing a few slides off here, but what we're looking for here is speed of deployment. Our company really relies on being very lean manned. We've only got 12 employees, and we need to be very rapid to react to the changes that we're experiencing. So one of the things we looked at was achieving funding by the 1st of September. This was our cutoff date. We had to get in the water. We had to get testing. We had to get the contracts approved and funded. That was actually delivered on the 31st of August. So we've achieved that. Moving the office to Wales. Originally, it was a Cornish-based company um, based in Bodmin. The funding is obviously WIFO funding, the key element there being Welsh, and so we were looking for a Welsh office. Pembroke Dock and the Port of Milford Haven were a key provider for that, and we've now moved into a building that was formerly the Fleet Surgeon's House in Pembroke Dock. Now, that's great as an office. It's an old building. We're reusing existing property, and we've completely refurbished it. We've not only got enough room for 12 people, we've got enough room for three times that number, which we're planning to utilise. 
200 metres away from our main office, we've got our main workshop. That workshop is next to our main store, where we can store all the equipment we need. And about an hour ago, we just signed a contract with Milford Haven for the provision of two jetties. So we can go straight from our office, straight to a workshop, straight to the jetties, into boats that will then take us out to our barge, which is less than five miles away. So everything is about being local and supporting the local business. One thing we have struggled with is the recruitment and recruiting on time. And because we're very lean manned, we needed a certain type of person. Um, and that type of person was extremely skilled that we found in Pembrokeshire, but not in the numbers that we needed at the time we needed. Pembrokeshire has a great oil and gas sector, a lot of engineering experience, but we just happened to arrive at the wrong time, um, near to the Christmas period where actually everything slowed down. So we didn't quite recruit on time, as we said we would. Um, our final employee was hired at the end of February, which has meant a very rapid transition for him to come in the company and have a product working in March. Using the sell to Wales process has actually been quite simple. We used the sell to Wales website and we've put tenders online. Um, now, one of those primary tenders was for our main contract for the refurbishment of our barge. Our barge that we've purchased is an old World War II fuel bowser with a hull that is similarly aged. She was used in D-Day to transport fuel, um, corrections to transport water. Um, she survived since then as a houseboat. We've gutted her, we've repainted her, and fundamentally not done a huge amount to the hull. What we've then done is put a load of equipment on top of her, and she's at sea now testing. So we are a wave energy developer that has a product in the water that's gathering data. That data is being streamed straight away to our office, and they're using that data to then straight away design a new product. And that new product will probably be made, hopefully in Wales, if not in the UK. On our barge itself, we're looking at various methods of power takeoff device, as I just said. Um, the first method is using this person here. So one of our brand ambassadors is Sir Steve Redgrave. Um, and we thought the simplest way would, of course, be to link him up to a Concept2 rower and just tie a generator on the back of him and keep him rowing 24 hours a day. Nice and cheap. Um, unfortunately, European time regulations came into effect and stopped us from doing that. But I've just been told that that won't be an issue in two years' time. So we've looked at various options there. Um, as we move forwards, we're exploring different avenues for that, and we're working with various partners for different generators. We're not looking at one solution. One solution doesn't fit all. So in our product catalogue, as we deploy it, we'll have various different options for various different parts of the world. Other generators go down one sort of route. We can alter them to see fit. Finally, we're looking at actually deploying at our first test site. And within the Haven area itself, it's got a very diverse region. Um, it's got completely different wave climate, completely different tidal sites, depending on where you go. We've managed to pick a nice site near to the mouth of the Haven that gives us the perfect opportunity to have nasty waves and nasty tides, but sheltered enough so that if anything goes wrong, we'll be able to actually recover her and bring her straight back in, straight for repairs. We're looking at the job creation in the area. This slide here, although it's a little bit wishy-washy, shows that although we've only got 12 people at the moment, with the job creation forecast for when the product goes to market in 2018, we're looking to double the amount of manpower we've got while staying in the same office. Looking forward to 2021, um, we can see that actually we're looking to employ about 60 people. We're never going to be a huge employer. We're going to use a very heavy contracting model, but predominantly all of those jobs are going to be highly skilled engineering jobs based in Pembrokeshire, hopefully based within the Pembroke Dock area. One of the things that was key to us really in WIFO funding is this cross-cutting themes and engagement with the community. And I heard Geraint mention this earlier. Pembroke Dock as an area um, has suffered um, with the removal of the Royal Navy from the dockyard. Um, there's not a huge amount of jobs going for future kids. And one of the ways that which we've helped out with the local community is engagement with the sea cadets. Now, that might be a little bit because of our naval backgrounds, but actually we've got a lot of knowledge within the company. And by giving up our time, we've been able to give them some extra local knowledge and by giving up some of our assets that we've got, assisting them with the training. Working with our Marine Energy Wells partners, um, we've also engaged with local schools. Um, A-level geography actually has a marine energy component within it, and at the minute they're looking at using us as a classroom and as an education piece. So it's not just about making a profit for us, it is about giving back to the local area and actually helping to generate the future jobs for our long-term growth. Final piece really is on, on the Milford Haven waterway, on a local area. We're looking at um, possible pollution within the environment. We've got a floating barge, 
that is an asset that can contain a number of different things. We don't know how that's going to react. We don't know what marine life is going to attach to it, which is an area that's still under investigation. But one of the things we are looking at is how uh, nitrate pollution is dealt with by different forms of marine life, such as mussels or seaweed, that were attached to the hull and actually act as a filtration. So as well as generating energy from the environment and having no impact on it, there's the possibility that we could actually have a positive impact in the localised environment um, to help actually improve the quality of the water. That's everything. Thanks.